So if you're a first timer or if you just <laughs> want to renew your passport, it will take about two hours or less. Two hours? Yes. That's it? Yeah. How And about? Ini ini beneran gak sih guys di Malaysia ngambil paspor atau buat paspor baru hanya dua jam? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Jumpa lagi dengan saya guys Cak Mujib Gimana kabar teman-teman semua Semoga sehat selalu dalam lindungan Allah SWT Dijauhkan dari segala merah bahaya Malapetaka bencana dan balak Serta berbagai macam penyakit Amin amin ya rabbal alamin Oke di sini kita akan meresan sebuah video Requestan daripada teman-teman sekalian di Instagram ya Di sini ada 5 sebab Kenapa Malaysia lagi best daripada Amerika Serikat Part 2 guys Nah kemarin kita sudah mereaksen yang part satunya gitu kan Nah dari segi makanan, daripada fast foodnya, daripada restorannya Seperti itu tuh beda banget Memang lebih baik Malaysia daripada Amerika Serikat Seperti itu guys Nah di sini di part kedua ada 5 sebab ya Jom kita tengok videonya guys Ini daripada Jai and Sam Saya sudah chat di Instagramnya dan beliau ya Abang nih mengizinkan saya untuk mereaksen videonya Terima kasih abang Sehat selalu, bahagia selalu buat semuanya Dan terima kasih sekali lagi buat abang semua Semoga bahagia dunia akhirat. Amin. Nah, di sini guys, langsung saja kita play videonya. Let's go. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke. Okay. Okay, video baru ini kami buat berkenaan Halloween kan. Oh, Halloween. So, hunting. Uh -huh. So, hey babe. Yeah. So, Halloween was yesterday, but we didn't do any videos about it. But <laughs> We recorded a <gasps> few activities that wow. kids around the neighborhood. Ini ini. And what they, what they did. Ini bener-bener Halloween ya, yang nggak 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 kita lihat di film, tapi kenyataan seperti itu. Dan Arab Saudi ya Allah juga merayakan astagfirullahaladzim. Nggak ngerti sama Arab Saudi saya. And what they wore. Uh -huh. And what else we did? We went to mom's house too, right? Yep. Yeah. We went to my mom's house and we had dinner there and then we also, you know, like watch my mom give out candy. Aha. Uh -huh. Udah ngeri juga sih guys. Ngeri-ngeri asli. Kalau Spider-Man biasa <laughs> aja gitu. A park in Omaha. <laughs> It's Omaha. fall season. See the leaves there? Yes, and when we were walking if you heard all the crunching okay. from all the leaves that are on the ground, they're all dried now and crunchy. <laughs> They make lots of noise when you walk. <laughs> yeah. Try to step on it. <laughs> Crunchy sound. Crunchy sound. <laughs> yeah, lagi like musim gugur berarti ya. Beautiful trees there. Hmm. Cantik guys asli. Bisa gitu ya pohonnya itu masya Allah gitu ya warnanya pink, warnanya kuning, warnanya hijau, merah gitu. Keren banget. Jadi kayak pohon buatan gitu tapi asli. Fall is definitely one of the most beautiful seasons in America. I would yeah, say. I love fall oh. season too. <laughs> Alright, so we are just musim semi apa musim ini sitting, guys. And now we are going to talk about something. Something that we already talked about before. <laughs> so, I think last two three videos we made one. Uh -huh. And that was about five things that are better in Malaysia compared to the US. And do you remember that? Yeah, we had lots of different topics like we talked about tips and we talked about like bank exchange between different oh, banks. Yes. Uh -huh. okay, okay. We also talked about gas prices, a couple other things Yeah, too. bathroom door and oh, tips yeah. too, right? <laughs> yeah. So, there are actually more things that are better in Malaysia compared to the US. And there are also things that are <laughs> better in the US compared to Malaysia. So, it's not like we are, how do you say? It? Saying one's better than the other. Uh -huh. Yeah. But we're going to do To do it again, five things that are better in Malaysia compared to the US, and you're going to hear it from an American perspective, <laughs> since she's been to Malaysia three times, right? Yep, three times. Okay, <laughs> you're going to start with the first one. What is the thing that are that is better in Malaysia compared to the US? You want me to tell? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the first thing that I think or we think is better is the amount of time it takes to get your passport for the first time. Okay. Explain? Oh. In okay. Malaysia, it takes about two hours huh? to get a passport. So if you're a first timer or if you just <laughs> want to renew your passport, it will take about two hours or less. Two hours? Yeah. That's it? Yeah. How And about... 
Ini ini beneran nggak sih guys di Malaysia ngambil paspor atau buat paspor baru hanya dua jam kurang lebih ya bisa lebih sedikit seperti itu. Hah beneran? Is that only at the capital city or is that no, in anywhere in Malaysia? Almost anywhere. Yeah. So it's like convenient for where you live. Yes, I remember that wow. one time uh, <laughs> I brought my mom to okay. go, like to renew her passport and she actually need to take a bus to to Thailand to the south part of Thailand so I drove her to to do her passport at like 9 a.m. in the morning nah. so she went there then did her passport and then came back home we drove to Ipoh and then came back home and then she went to uh, Thailand the south part Hat Nyai. the yeah. same day yeah on the same day <laughs> so how about the US how long does it take to have a passport What? Kalau di sini, kalau di sini, kalau pengalaman saya ketika renew passport di Indonesia khususnya di Solo ya guys, khususnya di Solo, di Indonesia di Solo dan itu sangat-sangat bagus juga. Jadi saya waktu itu membawa berkas-berkas sudah komplit ya kan, berkas-berkas yang memang syarat-syaratnya. Setelah itu bawa ke imigrasi. Ketika sampai di sana, udah nunggu antrian sebentar. Kalau rame agak lama sedikit ya. Di hari itu juga saya sudah mendapatkan paspor saya seperti itu. Itu. Nah, tapi ada juga istilahnya yang imigrasi yang pengerjaannya itu bisa dikatakan sekarang masuk berkas, besoknya baru jadi. Ada yang seperti itu juga, guys ya. Nah, itu tergantung daripada kitanya. Kitanya tuh kadang berkasnya komplit atau nggak komplit. Nah, itu. Itu itu syarat utamanya formalitasnya adalah Berkas yang kita bawa itu sangat-sangat komplit dan cocok dengan identitas paspor kalau memperbarui Tapi kalau istilahnya membuat paspor yang setahu saya Kalau dulu saya dibuatkan oleh paman saya jadi saya nggak ngerti suasananya gimana Yang penting saya sampai sana udah ngisi-ngisi setelah ngisi saya foto nah setelah itu saya pulang Nah, mungkin setelah besoknya atau dua hari baru jadi mungkin seperti itu saya kurang tahu juga kalau untuk sekarang itu udah lama banget itu di masa saya tahun 2010 kalau di zaman sekarang teman-teman coba komen ya yang di Indonesia nah itu gimana guys istilahnya prosedur apakah lama atau sebentar seperti itu saya kurang tahu kalau untuk sekarang tapi kalau kemarin saya memperbarui paspor itu sangat-sangat cepat juga guys ya nggak nunggu lama banget gitu Well, it's way longer than two hours. Okay. It's about like seven to ten weeks. What? Really? 10 minggu, guys. Gak mudah ya. To get your passport, and that's not just during COVID. Ah, like, that's COVID. In general, like mm -hmm. all the years before this, it's the same. Like seven to ten weeks. Wow. And then if you want to pay more, you can pay sixty dollars. I think it's about sixty dollars. To expedite your passport processing, uh -huh. to make it faster. But that's only like, yeah, to make it faster. Mm -hmm. But that's still like four to six weeks to get your passport. <laughs> oh my Because god, you have to send it in the mail, and mm -hmm. it has to come all the way back, and mm -hmm. so that's, two hours. That's a huge, huge gap. <laughs> yeah. Malaysia, two hours can get. Wow. Passport, you can get a new passport, but here in the US, it takes. 7 to 10 weeks. Gila, gila. Better All right, we move okay. on to the next one. Okay, so the second thing that's better in Malaysia than in the U.S. would be doctor or hospital bills. Wow. They're lower in Malaysia than in the U.S. Mm -hmm. You can just pick one for the example, right? The last time or we the went example. to the hospital. All right. You want to tell them? Yeah, so we didn't actually go to a mm -hmm. hospital. It's called like a clinic. It's okay. like where you go if you think that you're sick, but you don't want to actually go to like the emergency room. Mm -hmm. And so at the clinic, we went because you had like a cold oh, and yeah. flu symptoms. And we wanted to find out maybe what was wrong. Mm -hmm. So since we have insurance through our company, we have to pay money still. Ah. It's called a copay. So we paid $35 just to see the doctor at the clinic. And then they did some things with you back there and then they sent you out and gave you prescriptions of medicine you could go to somewhere else to fill which we also had to pay money for at that place mm -hmm. and the $35 that we paid to see the doctor 
that might not be the only amount we have to pay depending on the doctor. So they might charge us more later and send it in the mail. Okay. So if you have insurance, you still have to pay a copay almost always, and then you still have to pay for your medication separate from the doctor's office. Those Aww. are two things you have to pay for right off the bat. Mm -hmm. In Malaysia? <laughs> So in Malaysia, maybe because I'm used to the government hospital, so whenever I feel sick, I go to government hospital and I pay one ringgit, probably equals to 23 cents or 20 cents. <laughs> Murah uh, banget. See the doctor and after that, they will give us the medicines, like pills. If we have cold, they'll give us pills for that. Okay. Even though $35 seems like not too bad, but what if you get I mean, sorry, what if you have other like sickness that's like more serious? Right. It will cost more and more and more, right? Yeah. So if you like go to the emergency room, for example, because maybe you have a broken arm or you have to have something like an emergency surgery, it's going to cost more money. Oh okay, my it's God. getting darker now, <laughs> almost dark, and it's only 6.40 p.m. So you're going to do it quick, all right? Okay. okay. Go on, the third one. Okay, the third thing that's better in Malaysia than in America would be the amount of holidays you get off. Ah, school cuti holidays. sekolah. Mm -hmm. The students get off because of okay. religious celebrations or festivals. But here in America, there's one major okay. religion in the country or how our country was established. Mm -hmm. And so the only holidays kids get off here for school are just the Christian holidays. That's it. Ah. Yeah. So let's talk about Eid celebration. Yeah. So just so you know that people here in the US don't have a day off for Eid celebration. As a Muslim, <laughs> you don't get a day off from work okay. or for kids. They don't get a day off from school. But there are several cities here in the U.S. They start to recognize it for the school holidays. Ah. So, for example, in New York City, I think they just okay. started in 2015. City of Detroit, they start they started in 20, 20, 20, if I'm not mistaken. And there are also some cities in the U.S. that recognize it as ah, a holiday dalam for the school juga calendar ada, so they okay. allow kids don't have Jadi to go to ya, okay. during that holidays here in Omaha where we live we don't have uh, it as a public holiday at all so it's not a national holiday it's just a state not state city based holiday so it depends Aha. if your city councils for example in Malaysia we have Majlis Pemandaran or Majlis Pandaraya if they are the one who trying to like make it as the, as a city holiday then yeah they can do it but they have to they need to make sure like a lot of people in the city council board agree with it and I know it's just like one day of school so like if you missed one day of school in the US like especially as a kid or a high schooler mm -hmm. it's not really gonna affect that much but what if you had like a really big test or if you had a really big project due mm -hmm. and just that one student who was Muslim or a different religion had to miss because they're an important holiday. I mean, yeah. you need to spend it with your family, right. so you should have it off. Mm -hmm. But then they might have to miss something important at school. So it's not really yeah. fair to have yeah. to take yeah, off day individually. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. Cuaca macam terlalu gelap sangat. Kita akan pindah sekejap. Okay. Okay, so we move on to the fourth one. <laughs> yes, Gelap, sorry. And the fourth thing that is better in Malaysia than in the US mm -hmm. is income tax. And what I mean by Cukai that is the amount tahun. of tax that gets taken out of okay. your paycheck every month in America is very high. Wow. I would say. And in Malaysia, do you guys have income tax? Yeah, we do have income tax, but uh, you only have to pay it if you get paid. I think. 4,000 ringgit a ah, month or more. So okay. it's not like everyone has to pay it. If you earn less than that, it means that you don't have yeah. the income tax yet. And we don't only just have federal income tax, we also have state income tax. So most states, almost all states in the US, not every single one, but almost all charge you a fee for okay. working <laughs> every paycheck mm -hmm. per state. And then they also charge you a federal government tax ah. every month. I think there are just few states in the US that don't yeah. actually have state tax. Ah, but most beberapa. of them, they yeah. do, right? Just maybe two or three states, they're lucky. <laughs> yeah, so just imagine if you work in the US, if you earn this much, you'll be surprised of how much money they ah. <laughs> take from your like, paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. Last but not least, what is it, Sammy? <laughs> 
Okay, so the fifth thing that is better in Malaysia than in the U.S. would be <laughs> gated schools. Sekolah. So, oh, sekolah berpagar. Around the school is more common in Malaysia than in the U.S. In the U.S., there are very little schools ah, that have okay. a around the school that actually have a security yeah, 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 faham. Uh, protecting the school grounds. But in Malaysia, I've seen quite a few schools, especially elementary schools, that have gates yeah, around betul, them betul. and a security guard to protect who comes in and out of the school area. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, sorry. <laughs> but there's, there's one thing that I want to point out. It doesn't mean that schools here in the U.S. are not locked. It's actually locked. So it means that if visitors want to come to the schools here, the doors are locked and they have to ah. press the button and talk to the administrator. Yeah, so every door on that entire okay. school building. Okay, 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 okay. Kita bisa paham di sini, guys. Every door. Mm. So if a kid goes outside for recess and tries to come back in, they have to press a button to get back in mm -hmm. to let them in. Okay, so you guys might not know what this recess is about. So it's actually a break time for students. Students actually get like probably like 15 minutes. Students ah. in elementary school get like 15 minutes to play outside from the school building. Let's say if they have a basketball court okay. or they have a like a football fo small football area if they go out from the school building there's there will be no gate so they are more exposed to the like, outsiders mm -hmm. people around the area yeah the public yeah the public but what's the reasons why they don't have gate <laughs> well, I don't know if this is the main reason, but I have heard studies and heard of other people talking about okay. how people who have gates around their schools ah, makes, it, di penjara, okay. makes mm -hmm. it feel like they're trapped inside the school. So there has been talk about the reason we don't have gates or fences around our school buildings. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, that's about it. Five things that are better okay. in Malaysia than in the US. <laughs> Yeah, and this does not mean that America is bad or by any means. I love America. I love living here. It's just a couple of things that we've noticed that are actually better in Malaysia than in America. Yeah, and there are also some things that are better in America than Malaysia. But this is what we're trying to do. Just to make sure you guys learn something from Aha, this betul, video, betul. from our other videos. And also to share the differences between these two countries, Malaysia. And America. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching. You yeah, guys. we'll see you guys in the next okay. one. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Yep. <laughs> Salam alaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Okay guys, sudah selesai videonya dan itulah tadi guys lima sebab kenapa Malaysia lagi best daripada Amerika Serikat dan sangat-sangat wow sekali ya yang disampaikan oleh Abang J dan Sam. Uh, Kak Sam uh, I tak faham juga mau panggil apa dia kan <laughs> Kalau J kan abang macam tu Kalau Sam ni akak lah mungkin Akak saya lah macam tu Dan yang disampaikan tadi bahwasannya Ngecas daripada rumah sakit Itu juga kalau Malaysia sangat-sangat murah sekali Hanya satu ringgit Kalau di Amerika itu 35 dolar Meskipun itu sudah punya asuransi guys Dan selanjutnya yang menarik lagi Yaitu tentang pagar sekolah <laughs> <laughs> iya ya, pagar sekolah kenapa nggak dipagar? Ternyata ada penelitian di sana dikatakan bahwasanya kalau dipagar tuh kayak di penjara seperti itu guys. Kalau di sini nggak dipagar hilang siswanya. <laughs> Yang dipagar aja bolos ya kan hilang hilang gitu kan Nah seperti itu Dan selanjutnya adalah cuci cuti hari raya Ataupun cuti percutian yang di Amerika dan juga di Malaysia Itu kalau di Amerika hanya satu kali kayaknya Dan di Malaysia banyak kali ya percutian-percutian Nah seperti itu So gimana menurut teman-teman sekalian silahkan komen di bawah Bagaimana pendapat teman-teman Apa ada lagi gitu kan Orang-orang yang pernah tinggal di Amerika sana Perbedaan antara Malaysia lebih baik daripada Amerika Serikat Nah coba komen komen di bawah pasti ya setiap negara mempunyai ada keunggulan masing-masing ada juga kekurangan masing-masing yang terpenting adalah kita harus nyaman kita harus bangga dengan negara kita sendiri saya bangga dengan Indonesia teman-teman bangga dengan Malaysia seperti itu dan akak saya ini juga bangga karena hidup di Amerika seperti itu ya setiap orang harus menikmati dan Kebahagiaan itu kita raih dengan jadi payah kita sendiri, ya kan? Maksudnya, dengan apa yang kita lakukan tanpa istilahnya memberikan efek-efek yang kayak dramatis ataupun menderita dalam hidup seperti itu. Jadi, 
Bahagia itu sangat simpel sekali guys Intinya kita bersyukur kepada Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Apa yang telah Allah berikan Kita mau ditempatin di mana aja Kita ridha kepada Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Seperti itu ya Kurangi mengeluh karena mengeluh itu akan membuat hati kita menjadi sedih Ya kan Bahagia bahagia Senyum 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 Dekatkan diri kepada Allah Oke terima kasih Dan tengok video ini sampai selesai Apabila ada salah kata mohon dimaafkan Sampai jumpa di video selanjutnya Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh